feeling tired in the afternoon, having to take a nap around 2 or 4 o'clock, we're here to talk about the afternoon slump. I'm Dr. Carrie Lam, and this is Dr. Michael Lam. So what is this afternoon slump? I well, go through it, I'm pretty sure I feel it. I think most of us at one time or another have some feeling of kind of an energy drain in the mid-afternoon. Uh, it is a terminology that we use when the body, for some reasons we don't quite understand, all of a sudden kind of just kind of run out of steam. Mm -hmm. So, uh, excuse me, a, a nap is necessary, or the body has more brain fog uh, during those times. Uh, you just kind of don't feel quite like it. It's almost like you're just kind of going as a slow motion uh, mm -hmm. during the, the two or three or four hour period mm -hmm. in the afternoon. So that's what we describe as afternoon slump. Right, saying. and I think a lot of people feel it more when they eat a heavy meal or a high carb meal and things yeah. like that. Well, part of the afternoon slump, or, or some people in the severe state would call it like an afternoon coma, uh, our food coma is partly related to insulin and the metabolic response of the blood sugar. Mm -hmm. But even if you uh, take a, a lunch that is m mostly vegetables and no carbs, you can still have an afternoon slump simply because your body is in an adrenal fatigue state. You see mm -hmm. what I'm mm -hmm. So what exactly causes this? Well, uh, we, we feel that there's a, a, a variety of reasons, but the most common is a, a blood sugar issue. You know, when you eat a meal full of carbs, your insulin is responsible. However, if you eat a regular meal that your body it, it likes and is used to and is pretty clean and is not high in carbs, and you still have afternoon slump, uh, in the case of adrenal fatigue, it could be driven by your nutritional reserve. And what that means uh, is that your body has a sugar load uh, as an energy reserve. And when this load goes down, uh, then you come to, uh, like uh, the gasoline tank of a car, mm -hmm. uh, you have the yellow light that comes on, and then you have that slump. Now, in the body's case, it doesn't have a meter to tell you, so it tells you by way of signs that, hey, you know, I'm running low on energy. And so this is very uh, different uh, from a, a, a classic, what we call hypoglycemic uh, incidence. Mm -hmm. uh, in another words, you can have an afternoon slump. You can do blood tests, and the blood sugar uh, can be normal. Right. So it's not an abnormality in blood sugar as defined by conventional medicine, but you just feel it irritable, foggy, uh, nappy. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the symptoms and that you get. And, and in more, oftentimes it gets better uh, if you eat some food, for example. Uh, but of course, you know, there are many ways uh, to uh, do it as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what does it have to do with cortisol? Well, uh, cortisol is a... a, is a, a, a what we call a miracle hormone, because it is a hormone that both is anti-inflammatory as well as produce energy all at the same time. It's almost like a, a compound uh, that achieves both at the same time. The best way to uh, analogy to describe this is, is like a person who's driving a car. You have your right foot on the gas pedal, mm -hmm. and then you have to lift up the right foot to put on the on the left side to go on the brake pedal. Mm -hmm. But cortisol is such that it has both. So you can press on the gas pedal and the brake pedal all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's fantastic. And when your cortisol comes out, the body is able to release uh, 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 sugar uh, from the glycogen storage. At the same time, it's anti-inflammatory at the same time. So the bodies feel great. And that's why uh, athletes, uh, they take cortisol shots. Or if you have dermatitis that's highly inflamed, you put uh, uh, what I call hydrocortisone cream mm -hmm. or that type, you, you feel fantastic. But the problem with that is that if you do this over and over again, it's just like you try to drive a car yeah. with both feet on mm -hmm. both pedals, mm -hmm. you're going to burn up the car and you're going to mm -hmm. burn up the brakes pedal very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, the cortisol is something that drives uh, the uh, glucose uh, metabolism mm. is along with insulin plus other things but you don't want to be an imbalance it's the imbalance of the cortisol that can aggravate this problem mm -hmm. so what does the cortisol actually do in the afternoon slump it's because it's going on both well correct and, and, and everybody's different now in in the normal rhythmic curve the cortisol rise in the morning in order for you to get up around four or five o'clock it starts mm -hmm. going high and they start coming and it peaks at about six, seven o'clock and they start dropping down through the rest of the day. And when you hit the noontime, you are supposed to be at a point uh, that, you know, and through the afternoon, that's low. However, it's enough 
to keep the metabolism regulated. And when uh, this is imbalanced, and when I say imbalanced, it could be high mm -hmm. or it could be low. Mm. Okay, so both ways uh, can cause the other symptoms, and the reason is because it's not only about the cortisol, as I said, it's about cortisol and the play with the insulin, the mm -hmm. play on the liver, mm -hmm. the play on your load of what you eat, you know, whether it's high protein, high carbs, or high fat, and your body's internal constitution and how it mechanism uh, plays into all this that determines the ultimate outcome of your energy and your ATP production, which drives. Uh, your energy reserve. Mm -hmm. I think another one is also the circadian rhythm. Our natural circadian rhythm makes us want to nap around that, that time too. Well, that, that's interesting. And, and uh, I think for some people, there's a natural tendency to do that and it helps. For some people, if you take a nap in the afternoon, it's more difficult to sleep at night. Yeah. So everybody's different. You see, you have to find that rhythm and we go through great length and great detail to really identify what is your constitution, what is your rhythm, what is your cortisol pattern like in order to really resolve this uh, afternoon slump. And the good news is that you, it can be resolved. And if you are able to resolve that afternoon slump, what you will do is you will wake up with good energy in the morning, stay throughout the day, and slowly taper up until at night. So you don't feel that you have to you know, take two naps. And some people have to take three naps, you see what I'm saying? And so uh, these things have to be worked on, but it's not simple in the sense that, oh, just take a pill and it will work because it's not a pill driven, it's not a, a cortisol driven event, so to say, in terms of just a magic pill can solve the problem. And it's mm -hmm. not, so, not also something where you should just try to artificially stimulate your body during this afternoon slump. Well, and that's so one of the, unfortunately, uh, we see a lot, uh, it's one of the most common mistakes is that people tend to take uh, more stimulants, uh, uh, herbs, uh, even glandulars, coffee. you know, uh, coffee mm -hmm. uh, or sugar, you know, to try to kind of cover it up. And it does work for a short while, uh, but you don't want it to patch the symptoms while the underlying uh, root cause remains uh, unresolved. Mm -hmm. So that's um, the afternoon slump and hope you've learned about how you can help yourself through this slump. I'm Dr. Carrie Lam, this is Dr. Michael Lam. We're here to empower you on your health journey.